Okay, hello folks, welcome back for a really big update. This is the one year from the start, one year update. So I thought I'd do a little bit of a longer video this time, just to sort of give you my impressions of what the little Red Sea Max Nano has been like to live with for a year and, and how the tank's going and how we're going to uh, go into the new year. So, one year in, uh, this tank probably for the first six months of its life, yeah, we had a few issues, teething problems with the tank, with getting the dosing right and stuff, and the tank never really looked very good. If you've been following the videos, you probably agree. For the first sort of six, seven months, uh, it's not until we got lots of corals in here, lots of coral frags, and we got the dosing really nice and stable, uh, and the parameters nice and stable, which is, you know, key really to a tank stability. And maturity, obviously, as the tanks get uh, you know more mature, the better they get. Um, you know, you just notice it once you get to that year marker, stuff starts coming into harmony, and the tanks start to really pop and and just generally look really good. And every year thereafter, usually, as long as you can keep the tank parameters nice and stable, the more mature they get, the better and better they get, really. So. Yeah, the first six, like I said, the first six months of this tank, it was pretty tricky. Um, but it's been nice going from such a big tank, the Red Sea Reef uh, 750XXL, going down to this little Nano. I mean, if you have an issue, or, you know, the worst case scenario is that all you have to do is just do a big water change, which is really easy on a small tank like this. You can do 90% water change, you know, and you can correct any, any parameters, any issues with nutrients or whatever, literally within... 10-15 minutes. So that's what's nice about these little tanks. What the downside of the little tanks is things can change very quickly in a little tank because you've got small amounts of water so you know nutrients or parameters can swing. And the main one being alkalinity, keeping alkalinity stable. That's probably in my opinion the number one parameter you need to keep an eye on. If you can keep alkalinity rock steady uh, the corals uh, seem to love that. You know like anything stability is key. Now, of recent, I've changed a lot with this little tank. Uh, if you've been following the videos, you'll see what issues I've had with salinity, with the HANA digital checker, and I've gone back to the refractometer. I think that's made a, a big improvement. I think I was running my salinity far too high. Um, I've changed my lighting schedule. I've also changed my nutrients. I was always running the tank far, far too clean with a filter sock, 100 micron. And uh, yeah, with bringing nutrients up, nitrates up at the moment, they're currently at 5 ppm. Things have definitely coloured up and growing better. Um, phosphates, I'm not quite entirely sure where my phosphates are. I know they're pretty low. I test with the Salifa test kit, it's showing zero. They're probably not zero. I should uh, try a HANA checker to see exactly where they are, but I don't think they're, they're, they're you know, high enough to, to be uh, an issue. I think they're, they're probably, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, that sort of area. Um, yeah, as I say, I've brought nutrients up and everything is, is, is thriving really, really well. I'll get the camera off the tripod in a minute and show you sort of the growth I've got. Uh, we're currently running no filter sock whatsoever, stock skimmer, no GFO, no carbon. Um, and I, I do think, well, since I took the filter sock out, it's obviously helped with nutrients, build nutrients up. You know, the, the nitrates have come up, but they're staying nice and level really. They're not shooting up far, far too high, you know, too quick. So it's just a matter of keeping an eye on them really. Once they go to sort of like the eight, nine, ten, then I should probably, uh, you maybe do a big water change or whatever. But this hasn't had a water change now for probably six weeks or so. And it's never looked better. And get the camera off the tripod and uh, give you a little show around and, see how the corals are going and hopefully you'll see some 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 growth from the last uh, videos i've put up so bear with two secs okay so the corals are doing doing really well i mean there's the some of the new corals i've put in have taken a while to start to grow but this uh, lps frog spawn here nice polyp extension good color 
very slow growing though but uh, it looks of, of good health this Hollywood Stunner we've had massive growth on this highly aggressive coral uh, when I had it up slightly higher here it stung my Duncan corals trunk so you have to be careful with them ones but yeah massive growth on this this Blasto doing really well looks really happy please ignore my dogs it's Christmas time, I have lots of deliveries, so they're, they're on edge. Pink Hystrix, as usual, good polyp extension and looking really good. Tricolor Possilopora, that's uh, one of the newest corals that have been in. That's encrusting nicely and uh, good colour. Red Monty Cap. Grown loads since it's been in the tank, really encrusting well, plating out. Barley Slimer. This is a tiny, tiny frag when it went in sort of eight, nine months ago or so. And it's really, especially this past couple of months, sort of sprout out. And there's this new branches starting at the tip here, just erupting. Duncan doing good. So this is one head when I when I put it in and now there's what five or six new heads all around the top nearly the size of the original head this uh, green elkhorn has taken a while to start to sprout it's just starting to get some white tips now erupting everywhere so that's taken a while to to get comfortable and start growing but once they start growing they, they tend to go mad This acro Draki is just erupted loads of new growth, really good colour in the past six weeks or so. The Hisuta, Montipora Hisuta, that's doing really, really well, massive growth on that. My blue Digitata, we've had loads of growth, good colour. Purple stylo at the top. Again, everything's you know everything's doing really really well. Red digi at the back. Apart from and say everything's doing really really well. These millies that I've put in, they're encrusting well on the pla on the frag plugs. That's my original one there, encrusting well, but no real growth from the top. So I'm not sure whether. They're, they're particularly suited to a little nano tank like this. I'm not sure. Let's see what they're like when they get into the new tank. But yeah, they're encrusting well on the frag plug, but they don't uh, seem to be wanting to shoot up or start new growth at the top. Uh, and the acros, there's definitely been some little bit of growth on these acros here. And the other one just down in here. Crusting well on the plugs again, but no massive growth. Now, this one here this green hystrix ceratopora this if you remember in a few videos back it really wasn't doing well wasn't happy it was stripping from the, the base up and it had gone pinky purple the color was right off on it and it's really bounced back as you can see it's really nice and green now as it should be good polyp extension and growing well so whether that was something to do with the salinity or the lights, I'm not sure. The trouble is when you change lots of things all at once, you never really know what, what the issue was, but sometimes it can be a combination of things. GSP on the back wall, brilliant. It's been growing really steady to a point where I've, I've now fragged it. As you can see, I've got a frag rack in the corner and I've got some lovely frags we've uh, been making from that colony. So if you live near me, obviously there's some GSP available to purchase this ten pound of frag, quite uh, hard to get hold of this this long, long uh, polyped ultra neon green GSP. So filtration. I've just turned the skimmer off. The only downside to these little red sea max nose is the stock skimmer, as good as it is, is a very efficient skimmer. It does pull out loads and loads of gunk. Um, a little bit too efficient sometimes. I've had to dial it down 
This is my nutrients was running too low. I had to dial it down, which is you move the gate right down so it doesn't skim so much. Um, but the only downside to it is it is quite noisy. Now the noise comes from the air intake. This is the stock air intake. Uh, it doesn't have this pipe in it. I've put this pipe on it and put an exhaust system on. I can pull this up and show you. You can see there I've made, made an exhaust for it, which does quieten it, quieten it down, but it's still very, very noisy as you can hear. It's off at the moment. I'll switch it on and you'll uh, you'll hear. So I know the camera's very close to the skimmer, but it's you can really hear it. But you know that skimmers for you. Let's turn it off. As you can see, no no filter sock. It's our bar home ultimate marine in the sun. That probably is a bit gunky now. There's probably quite a bit of detritus sort of collected in within its uh, pore network, so that needs to come out and be shaken in a bucket of water to get uh, clean up a bit. But say nitrates are only at 5 ppm, so it's not a massive issue, but it's something I've never done, so it needs to be done. We're hoping you know, I've got a whole year of running. And of course, recently we haven't been running a filter sock the past few months, so it's all good. Two wave pumps We're using the, the Tunzi 6040s. They've been fine. Never really cleaned them out much. Maybe a couple of times. Never had to vinegar dip them. They've just been running like like Trojans really. I'd highly recommend them pumps have been good. So dosing, I'll take you down into the uh the sump show you dosing, that's the dosing rack. The dosing line, calcium, alkalinity, magnesium and the black. Those is the ATO. The Tunzi ATO Nano. So some we've got our TMC doser. As always, run one of these on my reefer 250. Very reliable and very accurate. Never give you any trouble. Dosing containers. Magnesium, I'm not really running, yeah, not running the magnesium at all. Tank doesn't really consume much magnesium, um, but alkalinity and calcium it does, and we're using the Red Sea uh, bulk powders to mix up solutions for dosing. We're not carbon dosing neither, not using any Red Sea's no pox. So really, I mean, this tank sort of runs itself. Yeah, it's, especially of, of late, of recent, it's a case of no water changes, no GFO, no carbon. Just keeping an eye on the, the parameters. No filter sock. I feed heavy. This is another key to why I think this tank's been successful as well, as this tank, I took a whole new approach. Uh, instead of bombarding our, my reef tanks with a whole range of different frozen foods, pellets, flake, and whatnot. This tank has exclusively from day one been running on New Life Spectrum probiotics pellets three times a day, maybe sometimes four times a day, quite heavily. Use a little bit of reef roids occasionally to feed the corals, but again, we don't go mad. But I think using the, uh, exclusively the New Life Spectrum pellets has been a key to the success of this tank. There's never really any detritus kicking around at all don't see any um it's just a great great food i think that that in combination with the uh biohome ultra ultimate marine biomedia creates a full cycle that that media uh, and obviously with the food going which is it's got a certain back a certain thing they put in it that makes the fish the bacteria the fish absorb the the nutrients from the food much much better so there's much less waste um the sand bed it's red seas live sand and it's never been vacuumed in a whole year it's never been stirred up in a whole year really neither um when you pump through it with the turkey baster you do get a little bit out of it but nothing brown it's just a white sort of misty stuff that comes out of it but it's nothing there's nothing heavy to try it's wise in it at all always been really white stayed really white no diatoms in it it's just stayed really good so sand beds usually need to be gone through or siphoned but 
This has not been done in a year and it stayed really good. I've kept this pulse coral in here for the clownfish. And as they, as you can see, are living in it and they love it. They are uh, displaying breeding behavior and they keep cleaning bits of rock off and this sort of area near the glass to lay eggs. Obviously the eggs, are, uh, they'll get eaten. But yeah, they're doing fine. We have got a Midas Blenniers, super shy. And he comes out ready for food. Or when it's near to feeding time, he swims around. He certainly don't come out for the camera. And we've got this little blue azure damsel in here. He's doing good. And he's behaving himself as well. So yeah, overall, uh, it's been a brilliant tank. Obviously, I've mentioned, if you follow the videos, that I am going to be doing an upgrade uh, in, very early in the new year, in January, which I'll uh, let you guys know near the time what I've gone for. What we do with this tank, I'm not entirely sure yet. Probably keep it running. But obviously, we do a lot of transfer of corals and stuff into the new one. The new one will go in place of this one here if we can uh, if we can fit it in but i might go on the other side of the room not sure yet but we're definitely doing an upgrade to a larger system as you can see this is all these frags once they start growing they're going to start colliding with each other it's just going to be too full so we're, we're desperately in need of a, an upgrade just give you a quick top down view And the flow off. So yeah, the little red sea max nano, one year in. Uh, it's been a great little tank, really. I would highly recommend if you think about purchasing one of these. The only downside is just be in mind that you know you might need to do a bit of an upgrade once you just, you know you, you want to expand your coral collection, or if you just literally only want a tiny tank, it's probably about the best little little nano you can buy. Really, um, it's it's very well set up. Looks really really neat. And once you get them established like this and they're mature. And you get a, you know a dosing system on. You really don't have to do any maintenance on it. So I'm going to wrap the video up. This will probably be my last video before Christmas. Now um, the next one will be into the new year with the new tank. So I hope everyone has a nice Christmas, and I'll catch you in the next one. <laughs>